Let's go to Aaron Rodgers and the Denver Broncos. That's who we're talking about right now here on Chat Sports. The Rodgers trade rumors continue, and in reality, they are going to continue until Rodgers gets dealt, and then they'll start a new once he wants to leave his next NFL team there. Now, Jeremy Fowler of ESPN mentioned this Sunday morning, or afternoon, excuse me, on, on SportsCenter. It says that Denver is monitoring the Aaron Rodgers situation. There are some reports from James Palmer that Denver thinks there's a chance they could get him, and Aaron Rodgers, meanwhile, is very much dug in with where he currently sits with Green Bay. And I think Denver, as we've mentioned many a time on this show, is a very real threat to go get Aaron Rodgers. Now, Troy Rennick, one of the Denver reporters based locally, had this general trade package so that his sources told him this is what the Packers might be willing to do. Of course, Denver gets Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay gets a first round pick this year for 2022, of course. 2023, a second round pick and a key young player. Now, that's, I think, the, hey, let's get this deal done right now and not Green Bay waits and drags it out and gets less value. That's fairly expensive. Two first round picks, a second round pick, and a key young player, maybe someone on the defensive side of the ball, maybe one of those receivers that Denver has. I doubt they'd move Cortland Sutton, but they got some extra depth on the offense line. Maybe, maybe an interior guy like a Lloyd Cushenbury could end up being moved as part of that. That's all speculation. But if this is the value for an Aaron trade here, who says no? Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Type B for the Denver Broncos or type P for the Green Bay Packers. That's B for Broncos, P for Packers. I'd say Denver, two first, a second, and a key young player. But maybe that's a little bit more than what Denver really wants to give up. But if they were to do so, they'd be getting a truly fantastic quarterback. 2019 stats here for Aaron Rodgers. The, comp the, the, the production has always been fantastic. The, the touchdown-interception ratio... That is something Rodgers has always done, done incredibly well. He does not turn the ball over. But these numbers 2019 were nothing compared to his 2020 stats. The, the level of play that we saw out of Aaron Rodgers from 2020 was a return to form. I would argue the decline had kind of begun to set in. He wasn't quite the same arguably best quarterback in the NFL. But that's exactly what we saw in 2020. 48-5. The, the, that is a Madden touchdown-interception ratio. He was incredible, and it is unheard of for an MVP to get dealt the very next year. That's why the Aaron Rodgers trades odds, at least as of right now, do still favor Green Bay. They're minus 150 for his team in 2021. The Broncos are plus 200. They are the sec they're the second team there. Las Vegas, they're plus 600. The Saints and Panthers, heavy long shots, plus 1,000 and plus 1,100 respectively. I still think Denver makes a lot of sense for Green Bay. I would keep an eye on Las Vegas as well, but if Aaron Rodgers gets dealt, I think it is fair to say the Denver Broncos are the favorites to land him. So make your predictions for me in the comments section. Where do you believe Aaron Rodgers is going to play next season? Is it going to be with Green Bay? Is it going to be with Denver? Is it going to be somebody else? Make your best guesses for me in the comments section. Where do you believe Aaron Rodgers will play in 2021? More Denver Broncos talk here today on Chat Sports. Some buzz going on around what they could do at the right tackle spot, as I'm sure you guys know. Jawan James blood his Achilles when he was not at the facility, and there are some question marks about if he's going to get paid by Denver. Lawyers are going to get involved, but more importantly for Denver in 2021, they got to find a right tackle. Now, I could see a scenario in which, like, Dalton Reisner goes out to right tackle, but that's probably a bit unlikely. And that leaves Calvin Anderson and, and Bailey, and it's not good enough and not remotely good enough right now at the right tackle position. And there were three players linked to Denver by Troy Rennick as potential fits. Dennis Kelly and Bobby Massey are expected to visit. He also mentioned Charles Leno, who is meeting with Washington, I believe, on Monday. So we'll talk about all three guys. I think those first two names, though, make the most sense. Dennis Kelly this past year was a starter for Tennessee. And I'd argue kind of surprisingly, they did cut him. Now, at this point in his career, not quite the best player, but he is a starting caliber option 
who is available in the free agency market in May. Those guys don't last that long. So I think Denver, Dennis Clay makes a lot of sense. The other name who was also cut by his most recent team is Bobby Massey, who they let go of early uh, in the offseason. I like Dennis Kelly more than Bobby Massey. And again, in the end, if you're Denver, I think you want to sign one of those two players. You know, Massey allowed three sacks, eight games. Tennessee did a better job of protecting uh, with, with Dennis Kelly with the way they ran their offense. A lot of runs there, blah, blah, blah. Both those guys are probably best tried. But yeah, you probably want them as a backup more than a starter. But you can start them. And they are much, much better than the current options right now on the Denver Broncos roster. The other name that was mentioned was Charles Leno Jr. And you could explore this one here, but he was a left tackle most recently for the Chicago Bears. So my suspicion here is that Denver would prefer Massey or Kelly. I would argue Leno is the best of these three options, but having played left tackle most recently, I don't know if you want to try and do a, pos a position change as well as just a, a different organization. That's a lot to ask of a guy who's almost 30 years old right now. Either way, I think in this week, in the very much not too distant future, the Denver Broncos are going to add a new right tackle. And maybe it's Dennis Kelly, maybe it's Bobby Massey, maybe it's Charles Leno. Either way, a new starter is about to be in place for Denver because you cannot enter the year with Calvin Anderson as your starting right tackle. That's a disaster waiting to happen. So get your votes in for me. Of those tackles, maybe someone even not on this list, who do you believe the Broncos should go out and sign? Is it Massey, Leno, somebody else? Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Who do you want Denver to go out and go sign right now? Let's talk to Sean Watson and a possible trade here. Amid a whole bunch of lawsuits that are still ongoing, Watson's 2021 is very murky, and the trade rumors are kind of dead as a result. But Peter King, in his, uh, in his, in his article for, the, for Pro Football Talk, broke down 2022 destinations, put out odds for all the different teams. So let's break them down here. Philadelphia, Carolina, next year. The top two favorites, plus 300 apiece, and I think both those teams make sense. Philadelphia still might need a franchise quarterback unless John Hurts ends up being the guy. Carolina picked up Sam Donald's option, but their organization is willing to be aggressive to go get a quarterback. Uh, Washington plus 500 makes some sense. They don't have anyone long term. Same with Denver if they don't get Rodgers and if Drew Locke ends up not going great. Houston is plus 800. They're fifth all the way down there. And of course, this assumes that the legal issues end up getting sorted out for Deshaun Watson because if not, well, then, you know, he's not going to be playing in the NFL. There were also the Saints at plus 900. Money gets tricky, but Sean Payton loves to be super aggressive. The Dolphins at plus 1,000, which they were linked pretty heavily, but they did lose some of their best assets from this year's draft because, well, they had the number three pick, and they're not going to pick in that early next year. Minnesota plus 2,000. He threw out Cousins for Deshaun Watson. Houston says no, but maybe Minnesota throws in some other draft capital. Pittsburgh at plus 2,500. I actually find kind of intriguing. I don't think it's the most likely outcome, but if they're bad this year and they have a high draft pick, that could intrigue Houston. And then there's the field, plus 3,500, because let's be honest, that seems pretty unlikely anyway. In the end, any Deshaun Watson trade is on the back burner right now as Watson deals with his legal issues as a result of multiple sexual harassment and assault allegations. And that's the priority for Deshaun to getting that figured out. And then there was, of course, the whole I want to hold out from Houston. So there's a lot going on right now in terms of what exactly is, is going to happen with Deshaun Watson short-term and long-term. So I was a little surprised King threw out a bunch of different teams for 2022, but it's intriguing, and he is pretty well connected. I'd say keep an eye out for Philadelphia if, of course, Watson stuff ends up getting cleared. So make your predictions for me then in the comments section. Where do you think Deshaun Watson will play? Let's go to 2022. Let's look way into the distance. Make your guesses for me in the comments section.